Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining AWS Mainframe Organization's demo session. My name is Arun Kumar Salvam. I am a Customer Success Solutions Architect at AWS. With me, I have Guy Sofer, Product Manager from MicroFocus. In this session, we are going to see an overview of AWS Mainframe Organization service, the benefits of migrating to AWS Cloud, the different components, supported patterns, and toolkits. And then we will see a demo migrating an application from mainframe to a managed runtime environment using MicroFocus replatforming tool. Here is an overview of AWS mainframe organization service. It is a unique platform to migrate, modernize, execute, and operate your mainframe applications on the AWS cloud. It provides a set of tools and runtime environments that covers all the phases of your migration and modernization journey. During the analyze, you will take the mainframe source code, conduct assessment to identify the dependencies and complexities, and then you plan your migration. During the develop phase, you will actually perform the migration by migrating your application source code and data. Depending on the pattern you choose, you may recompile the programs or convert that to a modern language like COBOL to Java. During the deploy, you create the application runtime environment and deploy your migrated application. And during the operate, you will run and manage your application on the cloud. You can also automate this whole process by using DevOps pipeline to build, test, and deploy. After the initial migration, you can still continue to use these tools to optimize and modernize on the cloud. Here are some of the key benefits of using AWS Mainframe Modernization Service. You get the agility of cloud by using DevOps pipeline and on-demand on resources. With managed service, you can minimize the operational complexity and focus on business values. With proven tool chains that supports thousands of past successful migration, you can minimize the risk of failure. And with pay-as-you-go model, you pay only for what you use and what you need and you can save the cost. Here are some of the components within AWS Mainframe Modernization Service. The foundational components are analyzer, converter, developer, compiler, and the runtime. And the runtime can be either test or production. Apart from these foundational components, we use other services to store data, to build the DevOps pipeline, or for security, or scheduler, and stuff like that. AWS Mainframe Modernization Service is a cloud-native managed service. Depending on where you deploy your mainframe application, the responsibility of who manages what changes. For example, if you deploy your application in an EC2-based target environment, AWS is responsible for managing the underlying infrastructure up to hypervisor. And you are responsible for anything above it, like patching the operating system, licensing and billing, scalability and high availability and everything. With AWS Mainframe Modernization Service, you are only responsible for managing the application and data. So you can spend less time on managing the infrastructure and more time on the innovation. We currently support two patterns, replatforming and automated refactoring. Automated refactoring is powered by Blue Edge Replatforming is powered by MicroFocus. But today, we are going to focus on replatforming with MicroFocus. With that, I'm going to pass it over to Guy Sofer for giving the overview of MicroFocus Toolkit. Guy Sofer, over to you. Thank you, Arun. Hi, very glad to be here. My name is Guy Sofer, and I'm part of the MicroFocus Mainframe Solutions Product Management Team. I've been working for MicroFocus for about 15 years now. And as a way of introduction, the tools we'll discuss are part of the MicroFocus Enterprise Suite. Now, MicroFocus is a global software company with more than 40 years of experience in modernizing and replatforming mainframe applications. The company has many different product portfolios, which enable customers on their digital transformation journey, or as we say, high-tech, low-drama. For mainframe applications, 
We believe in bridging the old and the new by enabling seamless replatform of mainframe applications on modern infrastructures. In this case, the AWS mainframe modernization service, which is as modern as it gets. When we talk about modernization, we look at it from these three lenses, application modernization, which is modernizing the application itself, service enabling it, identification of business rules and extracting them to microservices as an, as an example, process modernization, which is modernizing the way you deliver software using modern tools such as Eclipse, and modern methodologies such as DevOps and Agile, and infrastructure modernization, which is essentially running your mainframe applications on a modern, secured, and scalable platform, which is exactly what the AWS mainframe modernization service does. To support all of these different lenses, we have our enterprise suite. Now, some of those tools you'll see today, such as Enterprise Analyzer, uh, which we'll use for the application assessment stage, and Enterprise Developer, which we'll use to make sure the migrated application compiles and runs correctly on AWS. An important part of our suite is our Enterprise Server, which is the production server for mainframe applications. You will not see it in the demo per se, as it is the underlying engine that is running the mainframe applications on, it, on the AWS mainframe modernization environment. The way that uh, replatforming works is displayed here, and it loosely covers what you are going to see in the demo. We'll use Enterprise Analyzer to assess and plan and identify the source code and data we want to migrate. We'll then use Enterprise Developer to adapt the code and make it ready for the CI CD pipeline, run the pipeline, and deploy the application as is to run on the managed service. The runtime instances are pre installed with Enterprise Server. It is important to note that you won't see any code conversion or translation here. The COBOL code will run as is on AWS, preserving the business logic and behavior. And one thing that is worth mentioning, although isn't specifically part of today's discussion, is that the AWS mainframe modernization runtime also supports highly available, scalable deployments that take advantage of both AWS services and built-in clustering support of Enterprise Server. So, I, so you are really getting the best of both worlds here in a box. Now let me pass back on to Arun to describe some of the AWS services that are used in the demo. Here are some of the key services used in this demo. We use AWS mainframe modernization service for migrating your mainframe applications. We use AppStream 2.0 for streaming desktop applications through web browser. RDS is a database, S3 is a storage, object storage, and we use code pipeline, code commit, code build to build DevOps pipelines. We use CloudFormation template to provision your resources using infrastructure as a code. Now let's see some of the setup we have already done. First, you need to set up the AppStream 2.0 for Enterprise Analyzer and Enterprise Developer. To do that, you can download the CloudFormation template from the user guide and provision the same. Once the resources are provisioned, you can use AppStream 2.0 to access the Enterprise Analyzer and Enterprise Developer. Next, you need to set up code pipeline for build and deploy your application. Again, we are providing a sample CloudFormation template that you can modify for your application. Once the pipeline is created, you can use that to build and deploy your application onto AWS mainframe modernization runtime. As soon as the application is started by pipeline, you can start using the mainframe applications. This is how our demo setup will look like after all is created. On the left-hand side, you can see we have a car demo application running on the mainframe. We take the source code from the mainframe and use Analyzer to analyze the dependencies and missing components and everything. Once we have everything needed for the migration, we use the developer to migrate the application and data. Then we commit the migrated and tested application components into the core commit. The pipeline will get automatically kicked off and provision all the necessary resources. The pipeline will also start the application server so that we can use the mainframe application. We use Amazon RDS to store the application data. 
Now let's take a look into the card demo application on the mainframe itself. Card demo is a mainframe application designed and developed by AWS. It is publicly available in GitLab under AWS samples for anyone to download and use. We use this mainframe application to showcase AWS and partner technologies for migration and modernization use cases such as discovery, migration and modernization, performance testing, augmentation, and etc. The car demo application is built using mainframe technologies like COBOL, JCL, CICS, VZAMP files. The application has both batch as well as online. Now let's take a look into the application itself on the mainframe. I have connected to the mainframe CACS environment and entered CACS transaction ID CC00 for car demo application. The application has its own login screen. Now I'm going to log in using my user ID and password. The main menu has several options to manage account, credit card, and transactions. Now let's go into option one to view account information. I'm entering the account number here. I can see that the values are fetched from the VSAM file. I can also see a current balance of $1,565. Now let's go back and choose option six to list transactions. This screen will list out all the transactions that I have. You can use PF7 and PF8 to go backward and forward. You can also select a particular transaction to see detailed view of a transaction. So this is how the card demo application works on the mainframe. Now let's see how we are going to migrate this mainframe application to a managed runtime under AWS mainframe modernization service. So as I'm the business analyst, Arun has provided me with access to Enterprise Analyzer through Upstream. Amazon Upstream is a fully managed, secure application streaming service that allows you to stream desktop applications from your AWS account to a web browser. So when Arun granted me access, I got this invitation email and I can go to the login page, enter my credentials, and get access to a desktop machine in my browser without installing anything with Enterprise Analyzer ready to go. So here's my desktop. I can go and open Enterprise Analyzer. And I will create a new workspace for the sources from the mainframe. Call it US files. And the database that will hold the information is the Aurora Postgres database that Arun created as part of the infrastructure. So I have my credentials. And I can create the workspace. Works workspace has been created. So let's open it. And now the first thing that we'll do is load all the files that we downloaded from the mainframe and see what we have. So I'll set state the root folder. And we'll register about 300 files and let's analyze them. So we analyzed all the files. We can see them right here, everything that we have. You can see the different relationships between the files, who calls, this program, which uh, 
who this program calls as well. So a lot of information right here. And let's see what we have in our inventory. So we see about 70,000 lines of code, 281 files. We can see that we have some missing copybooks here. So let's look at the details in the verification report. These are the errors. And more importantly, here are the missing files for this workspace. So this is an iterative process. We'll find missing files. We'll go back to the mainframe. We'll get them. We'll add them to the workspace and do that until we have a complete inventory. So we are missing three copybooks. Let's add them now. And what we can see is that when we added files, some of the existing files need to be reanalyzed because they're dependent on the new files, the new copybooks. So we don't need to analyze the entire workspace again, just what is affected. So we'll select all unverified and verify them again. Okay, now that these are verified, let's look at the inventory report. Okay, no missing copybooks. Now let's start looking deeper into what we have. We'll use our migration report, portability assessment. So the portability assessment contains a lot of useful information, some statistics about uh, source types, lines of code. We have the inventory report that we saw before. We have unresolved report, unreferred cross-reference report, which is all the relationships between all the different objects in this workspace. have a unique list of PDS members used in the project. Missing objects. And we have additional tab for data analysis. So we'll include interface files, file usages, create, read, delete file usages by JCLs with the right place in the source that it is used. A lot of very useful information. Um, in the assessment tab, we have um, supported system programs that are being used and additional information. And sometimes in the migration project, some conversion work is needed. So we also identify this. In this case, these are assembler modules that are being called by COBOL and we need to convert them. So we have two assembler files that needs conversion. Usually it will be done by the team or the partner that we're working with. In this case, I have it converted already. So what I'll do is remove the assembler files from the workspace. And add the converted files the COBOL versions of those assembler modules. Here we go. Okay, now looking at the inventory report, we don't have any assembler files, we don't have any missing files, so looks like we're in a good status. But we also know that these files are a mixture of applications from the mainframe and we want to focus on one specific application that we're going to migrate at the first stage. So let's look at the interactive call map. So very fast we can see that there are at least two applications, maybe three in here. I could zoom in 
and figure out the boundaries of the different applications. But in this case, I think that we can identify the boundaries very easily. So this is the first application, car demo. We'll tag it. And the rest is the second application, which we are not going to migrate at the first stage. So we'll tag it as well. This is bank demo. Now that we did that, we can redraw the diagram with the tags and zoom in only to the part of the source files that are interesting to us. And we can see this is our car demo application. We can look at the sources. And to start preparing the migration package, I will move all those programs into a new project. And include all referenced objects by those programs. Now we can zoom in here. We can see the different programs, how they call each other. We can look at data flow. So for example, to see that this specific program, which lists transactions, are reading the transact file. And this program as well, reading the same file. We can see the data relationships across the application right here. And we can also look at Kixflow. which is very interesting. Well, we can see transaction, the programs that it use, and the screens as well. So I can actually visualize the screen. Now this screen lists transactions. So let's call it list transaction. And this program also lists transaction. So you can see that I can annotate the information here and add more information about the different objects. And this is stored in the database, so accessible to all the team that has access to the upstream instances uh, of Enterprise Analyzer and are connected to the same central database. So that's very good. We have all the information that we needed. Go back to the main window. And we can see that we have this sub-project that contains everything that we need for the migration package. What is missing is, are the JCLs. So what we'll do is include all referencing objects for completeness. And now we also have the JCL files, which is great. Now the package is complete. We can look at the inventory report again. We can see that out of almost 70,000 source lines, we now have 36,000 source lines, 103 files that are part of the migration package. This is good information. We can look at the CRUD report and see all the data that is being used 
and how it is being used and by which program is it create, is it read, update, delete, and this list of VSAM files will go to the migration team to unload, to download from the mainframe and upload to the new environment. So this is extremely useful for the migration. And one last thing that we want to do is generate the portability assessment report probably for the new scoped project um, for reference, but also the executive report. The executive report is kind of like automatic documentation for the entire application focused on the car demo application that we're going to migrate. A lot of useful information here, um, but also I want to show you that, for example, for each program, you can go into the program, get some statistics, lines of code, volume, cyclomatic complexity, the files that it reads, all the relationships, and a nice diagram of system program usage, transactions, data. This is for each program. And also, we can see all the different screens in the application in this single report. So this is a single report that can be shared with the team with a lot of useful information about application documentation. So that's it. Everything is now ready. All we need to do is actually create a migration package. So we save the, uh, select the project, export sources from the workspace, We zip it up, and here's the zip file I'm going to upload to the S3 bucket for Arun to do the actual migration work. Over to you, Arun. Before we start with the demo, I want to quickly highlight some of the preparations we have already done and will not be shown during the demo. We have uploaded all the source code into code commit repository, set up local enterprise server on developer instance for local testing, imported all the mainframe CACS system definitions, converted all VSAM files from Epsidic to ASCII, as well as added build.xml for build tools in code pipeline. Now let's get started with the demo. In this S3 bucket, I have all the source code for card demo application. Now I need to launch enterprise developer for doing the actual migration. To launch Enterprise Developer, go to AWS Mainframe Modernization Console and from the side navigation menu, click on Tools and then look for Microfocus Enterprise Developer and click Launch in AppStream 2.0. This will take you to AppStream 2.0 console. From there, go to Stacks and look for Enterprise Developer Stack and go to Action and create streaming URL by giving an user ID. And I'm going to change the expiration to two hours and get URL launch in browser. So this is going to launch enterprise developer instance and give me full access to the desktop where I have Microfocus enterprise developer already installed and ready to use. The enterprise developer comes with Eclipse-based modern IDE as well as local enterprise server for testing. It also enables developers to easily write programs, compile programs, debug, and test locally for their mainframe applications. Now, I'm going to open the enterprise developer IDE and import all the source code that I received from Guy so far for the migration. Now, go to Applications and launch Enterprise Developer. I've already created a workspace directory under my home folder, so I'm going to use the same. Click launch. And it opened the enterprise developer. Now let's create the project. To do that, right click, go to new and select Microfocus Cobol project. 
and give a project name. I'm going to give M2 car demo. And click finish. Now it has created the mainframe COBOL project. I'm going to uncheck the build automatically so I will have more control. Now let's import the source code by right clicking on the project, import, and again import. Now select general and select file systems and click on browse. I have my source code in home folder. So I am selecting the card demo apps, selecting the whole folder and click finish. This will import everything in the folder into my project. Now the import is complete. Let's configure the project. First, I'm going to create a load lab folder. To do that, I'm right clicking on the project name, new, go to folders and create a folder called load lab for all my compiled binaries to go. Click finish. And now again, right click on the project, go to properties, microfocus, build to configurations, expand that and go to BMS and click on enable configuration specific settings. It's in the settings. I'm going to desect to give a directory name. I'm giving CPY minus BMS because I want all the symbolic map copybooks generated by the BMS compiled to go there. And then I'm going to change the binary output path to the folder that I have already created, which is load live. Select that, click OK, click on apply. Now go to COBOL and same enable configuration specific settings and in character set, change it to ASCII and in additional directives, let's add a directive that is specific to preserving the epsidic sign, that is sign epsidic because the application was copied over from the mainframe. Click OK and apply again. I also want to generate listing file, so I'm going to say S and uh, click apply, go to link and go to output path and select load live, click OK. I did this change because I want all the binary to go to the load live. Now let's go to the build path to set dependencies for COBOL copy books. I'm going to select copy and copy BMS here and click up, apply and close. Now we are all set. We have all the COBOL programs and copy books and JCLs are here and we have also configured the project for compilation. Now let's compile all the source programs by doing a build project. This will compile all the components in this project like batch COBOL programs, CACS COBOL programs, BMS maps, and etc. You can also compile a specific program by right clicking on the program and select say compile. You can see that the programs are being compiled now the COBOLs and BMS maps. The compilation is complete and the build is successful now. And I have all the compiled binary files are in the load live folder for my COBOL programs and BMS maps. Now let's test the application by using the local enterprise server. I have already created a server called Cardamo and configured it correctly. Now let's go ahead and start the server. To do that, right click on the server and say start. Click OK. You will see the console logs here with messages coming from my local enterprise server. 
looks like the application is started now. Let's go ahead and show 3270 display for testing my application. Click connect. It's going to open the Roomba terminal emulator within the IDE itself. There you go. We are now connected to the migrated application within the local enterprise server. Now I'm going to log in using the user ID and password that I have used on the mainframe. User 001 and my password, hit enter. I got the main menu. I'm selecting 01 to view account. I'm entering the account number that I have used on the mainframe. Hit enter. So it's fetching the values from vSAM file and displaying it correctly. After successful testing of card demo application in enterprise developer instance, I have uploaded all the source code and relevant files into code commit repository. You can see here I have build.xml file from enterprise developer project. Also, I have copied all the source programs like BMS maps, copybooks, and JCLs. Along with that, I have also copied settings from the enterprise developer for BMS and COBOL program, which has the compiler directives for the build tools to compile using them. I have also created the code pipeline using the CloudFormation template that I have downloaded from AWS mainframe organization documentation. Let's take a look into the same in the CloudFormation console. To do that, go to search and search for CloudFormation and click on CloudFormation and it will take you to the CloudFormation console. You can see the stacks created here for M2 demo pipeline. And that's the one I actually downloaded from AWS mainframe modernization documentation and created here. Now let's go to the code pipeline and release the change. Go to pipeline, pipelines. You can see the pipeline that I have created. Typically the pipeline will get kicked off when the change is committed to the code commit repository. For demo purpose, I'm going to manually release the change. Click release and you can see that the code commit has detected the change and is in progress now. Now the build started. You can see the details by clicking here. And the build logs are coming out from the build tools. You can see that the COBOL programs and BMS are being compiled here. Now let's go back to the pipeline and see if the build is complete. The build is successfully completed now. Now the deploy started. The deploy has three stages in it. Deploy environment, import data, and start application. The deploy environment will create application and environment and deploy the application into the environment. Once that is done, the import data will import all the VSAM datasets. Once all the VSAM datasets are imported and the start application will start the previously deployed application. Upon successful start of the application, we can verify the application to make sure the application is working correctly on the managed runtime environment. Now let's take a look into the deploy environment to see what's going on there. We're looking into the logs now. It's copying all the assets here, like JCLs, procs, and all the binary files. You can see that the application is being created using the application configuration JSON file here. And you can also see the application is being created using the AWS CLI, the command line interface for AWS mainframe modernization service here. The application is still being created. 
now the deploy application is complete. Let's go back and check the pipeline. Click on the pipeline. Now it is doing the import data of all our VSAM files for the Cardamo application. The import process again uses AWS CLI to import the data from S3 bucket to the Microfocus data store. The dataset import is now complete. It is doing the start application now. Let's check the details. It's starting the application. As soon as the application is started, we will go to the AWS mainframe modernization console and verify the application and environment created by the pipeline. Application has successfully started now. Let's go back to the pipeline. And you can see that the pipeline is complete. You can see all green up to the start of the application. Now let's go to AWS mainframe modernization console and verify if our application and environments are created. Yes, we have our application running and the environment is also created and available. Now let's verify the card demo application to make sure it is working the way it was working on the mainframe. To do that, I'm getting into the application to get the DNS host name and the port that I am going to use it in the 3270 mainframe terminal emulator. Now let's go to AppStream again to use the Roomba. Go to Applications, Launch Roomba. Select Mainframe Display. Go to Connections, Configure, TN3270. Click on insert and paste the DNS host name. I'm going to use the same 6000 port. Apply and connect. There you go. Now we have connected to the application that is running in AWS mainframe modernization managed runtime. Let's log in with the user ID and password that we have used on the mainframe. Hit enter. Going into option one to view account, entering the account number that I used on the mainframe, hit you enter, it's getting the values from VSAM datasets. We have now successfully migrated the card demo application and deployed into AWS mainframe modernization managed runtime. Okay, I hope you enjoy this end-to-end -end demo. To summarize, we wanted to re-platform the car demo application as is from the mainframe to AWS mainframe modernization service. We started by provisioning the entire infrastructure for assessing, planning, developing, and deploying the application. This was done using infrastructure as code, running scripts and templates that automatically created everything. We analyzed the code from the mainframe and created the migration package for the target application using Enterprise Analyzer. Then we made sure everything compiles correctly and locally tested it using Enterprise Developer and kicked off a complete pipeline to build and deploy the application to AWS mainframe modernization runtime engine. Now this was just a basic build and deploy pipeline, but once it is there, we can leverage other services and add more steps such as security checks, code quality, testing, verification, staging deployment, authorization, etc. Now, I think we all understand that migrating a mainframe application is not a half an hour exercise. So as mentioned, we did skip a few stages which would not make an interesting demo, such as importing the CSD definitions, converting the VSAM files, and creating the application definition file. But these are all covered by AWS mainframe modernization tools and services and are fully documented. We'll be happy to cover everything in the Q&A section, of course. Now, the benefits of this approach are many. Fastest time to value, lowest risk, taking advantage of new platforms while preserving the code and business logic intact. But most importantly, it works. And Microfocus proven track record is what led AWS to choose us to enable the replatform pattern 
of this new service. And lastly, with the different tools and services we've demonstrated, you can also start your application evolution as part of your modernization journey, even gradually moving towards microservices, if that makes sense for your application. But this is for another webinar as our time is up. So I'll now pass back on to Arun to wrap up this presentation. Arun? Thank you, Guy. Our approach to mainframe modernization involves three phases, assess, mobilize, migrate, and modernize. We start with an assess by doing a rapid discovery and migrate one to two applications in the mobilize phase as a POC or pilot. Then we use that experience to migrate the rest of the workloads in migrate and modernize phase. The tool chains that we provide through AWS mainframe modernization service covers all three phases of the migration. AWS mainframe modernization service is generally available now. You can access it directly from AWS console or from the CLI or APIs. It supports both MicroFocus and Blue Edge tool chains, and there are tutorials available for you to try. Here are some useful links to learn more about AWS mainframe modernization service. I highly recommend you to go through the tutorials and try it yourself. And finally, thank you for attending this demo session. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you again.